start that. So um, yeah, the, the course is open to all students and all faculties and also to special students. Um, and the, the idea behind that is that we benefit a lot from the sort of diverse uh, vantage points and I actually have a graphic showing that. So this is a pretty popular way to show it and kind of something needed now is kind of, you know, diversity giving us hope, right? So, so um, yeah, so, so, so that's really true. And so the preparation in terms of the amount of medical and scientific background among the students in the course is, is, is quite varied. And there's really not any problem with that. It, um, you can look at it various ways, but there are about five lectures in the course that have some medical content, medical terms, but um, it, it's not so intrusive that if you don't understand those terms, you wouldn't be able to understand the lecture. You actually can understand the lecture even if you don't have the background to understand those terms. So it's a, it's a pretty accessible content and we do a lot of things like people may be concerned, for instance, uh, um, what happens if you're a low performing student in the course? Well, let's, let's talk about the midterm first. So the midterm is 20% of the grade and the grades are scaled in a kind of unique way. So like we take the raw score in the midterm, let's say it ranges from like 20 to 95% in terms of raw score. And we, we, we generally then scale that up. So we may add like 50 or 55 points to the bottom student and like four points to the top student. So the top student gets uh, 99, the bottom student gets somewhere in, you know, the 80s uh, for like a B or a, or a B minus. And, and uh, yeah, we've, we've been doing that for a long time. I haven't spent a single day in jail as, as a consequence. There doesn't seem to be any literature on this like if you have a relatively difficult exam and like very heterogeneous students taking the course, what do you do to kind of normalize the grades? But that's what we've, we've been doing. And we, we also allow a kind of moving up students' grades if their performance in the final paper which is worth 40% of fi final presentation, which is worth 30% is much higher than the midterm, then we would kind of discount how much the midterm counts and, and count the, those scores more. So how does that turn out? So this is a graduate course mainly taken by undergraduate students. <laughs> so it, it results in a lot of high grades, like this past term, everybody got an A of some kind, either A minus, A or A plus. And, and that's because we didn't have any student who was coasting and we didn't have the, the sort of the, you can think of this phrase with a bunch of hyphens in it. Students who always get Bs, but want to take the really cool courses. So there are students like that who've never gotten an A, never intend to get an, get an A. They just sort of going through getting Bs and, you know, Bs at the U of A are perfectly good grades and it's kind of their favorite grade. They enjoy getting Bs. So, <laughs> you know, I'm feeling very, very concerned because this student is getting like a B 
is the lowest ranking student among the students taking the course. But sometimes they're entirely happy. That's what they expected. And so, <laughs> and sometimes you, you think of conflict about grades. It's, it's, it's kind of funny that the usual conflict is a group of students know each other and the student who got A is really upset that he or she didn't get an uh, A plus because he knows that there are co colleagues for his that did get an A plus. But it's very clear performance wise that he's in like a, a different little curve. You know, a group of students here, there's a cluster here, the students who get A's, and then there's a space, and then there's another cluster of students who get A pluses. And so there's, it's very clear that he's in the A's and he's not in the A pluses. And so he'll, be a little bit dissatisfied with that, but it's not like, you know, we never have to take it to like arbitration or anything. We don't, we don't have to like, let's escalate this dispute. No, we don't, we don't do that because they, the people in those bodies where you take grading disputes would be pretty upset if people started coming there who got A's and wanted A pluses, right? Yeah, so that, that's kind of how things run. And do people ever get C's? Yes, uh, but but it hasn't happened for seven years. There's students who get the feeling that this is a really easy course. So they intend to come in and do absolutely nothing. So why wouldn't they fail? They wouldn't fail because the other students are so exciting to listen to and the content itself is so interesting that even if your intention is to do nothing and learn nothing, you accidentally still learn enough to pass <laughs> because it's so exciting and the uh, other students are so energetic and keen. And the final thing to tell you, which also hasn't happened for a few years, but people who are undergraduates have to be interviewed like you are now doing. But Graduate students don't have to do that. They can just go into Bear Track, sign up for the case, for the course, right? But then the first day of class comes and there have all these charismatic outgoing people like, like you, you know, the undergrads enter the room. And then these generic graduate students, nothing special who just, you know, mechanically signed up for the course show up and those grad students look around at the, the eager and charismatic out, outgoing undergraduates. They think I could never compete with these guys and they never come back. So, so that sometimes happens, yeah. So, so we haven't had a first day encounter like that for maybe o over five years, but certainly in the past that did happen and it was really you know amusing to say <laughs> for me to secretly think you should have researched this this course before you decided to just you know take it and, uh, yeah well i'll just you know it's, i'm a graduate student it's a graduate course i guess i'll take this you know and you see how gleaming and shiny and impressive the the undergraduate students are scares you to death. You never knew there were people to compete with like that. Yeah. So so anyway, and and then if you want to think of a full experience in life, there are many other like offshoots and um, extra things you can do related to the course. You don't have to do any of that, but. There's the future and all that jazz there, with, which is uh, important subjects, which many people wouldn't sit still for a lecture on, but they need to learn anyhow. And so you put that in poetry and music and entertain them for an evening and they accidentally learn the same stuff that they would have learned if it had been in a lecture. So that's called the, po the future and all that jazz. And we're, we're intending to do an actual album for that maybe about uh, three years from now and we're looking for student input on the album so there's something to do right now which is to get for us to be able to say 
that the selection of tracks on the album had input from U of A students. We need that, you know? So we need your thoughts on it and stuff. Yeah, these are all kind of optional things. You can be a TA for the course. You, you can help us with, you know, suggesting new course con content. We also do in, in international peer review uh, where we um, contact prominent people out there in the world and have them look at the videos from the course and suggest how we could uh, improve the course. So for instance, if you look at quantum biology, that began as a single lecture in the International Peer Review. People said that this is much too dense. You need to divide it up into multiple lectures. So that's what we now do. And if you really research that carefully, you would realize, gee, you know, recently, Jack Tuszynski hasn't been teaching that. We're, we're sort of uh, using his old videos and so on. But this coming fall, he's going to start teaching it again. So you'll get him live as part of the fall 2021 course. And he's got a lot of new content and so on. So fall. 2021 is, is, is a really favorable time for, from the sort of quantum biology part. Also uh, from the subject of, you know, blockchain, cryptocurrency, we have never had any teaching about that bef before. We are uh, adding that in the fall. So a course about the future has to morph and change and react to the changing thoughts about what the future will hold. So, so it, it cannot be the same every term. So like, you know, Amir, what he received when he took the course, when, when he helped us with, you know, videography for the course, all those uh, teaching sessions that he witnessed were slightly different from what you will get because, you know, time moves on and things change and so on. So, so it's kind of fun. And, and what does that mean? It, it means some students, well, let me give you the full spectrum. For fun, some students, this is just another course. Nothing special, you know, it's taken a lot of courses. They take this one, they, they finish it and they're off and that's it, they're into other things. For other students, it's life-changing. They had no idea there were subjects like this, <laughs> you know, that could be so engaging and, you know, so they basically find something here that, that becomes their life's work and they want, they want to keep associating with the course. So e even though they've already taken it, they come back and, you know, help us with the course that may become TAs and, and so on. For fall 2021, we potentially have seven TAs. Now, I don't know, maybe, that, maybe that's, you know, illegal. I find out maybe that's too many, you know, maybe, maybe, maybe the university has a limit. But it just shows you how much interest there is. People have already taken the course in, in further, further association with the course. Yeah, so, okay, any, any questions about that? stuff um no i just think that like this is like a lot more like diverse than honestly i thought it was like going to be i thought it was like more of i don't know like a lecture based course and like i don't know you'd do a project in the end but like i did not realize that there was like one like such a huge difference in like the different backgrounds of students coming in like the graduate and undergrad so that's kind of cool um but yeah and like i just think that it's kind of neat too like the fact that i don't know there's involvement even outside of the course um and like students are coming back for it like that's amazing because that means yeah. that, like they're both and before the pandemic there was an important uh, tuesday night poetry component where i i played a you know, significant role at, at, at the Tuesday night poetry at the Nook uh, Cafe downtown. And, and uh, I sort of set up the lights, did the uh, video recording and video editing and, and so on. And I mean, it was really, you know, dramatic and, and a good learning experience for me 
some of the best poets are, are people whose lives are at risk every day. And, you know, the where their next meal is coming from is always a question, <laughs> stuff like that, you know, things that most of us don't really have to worry about. But like, and, 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 and uh, yeah, so, so I learned a, a, a great deal from those poetry sessions. Um, it isn't practical to ha have them now. Um, and then you might think, well, this must be the end. You know, he's described all this surprising stuff. Now it's over. No more description. No, no, but that's, that's not true. Because on June 20th, which is pretty soon, um, that's my, my 75th birthday. It's also the summer solstice on that Sunday and it's Father's Day. So it's a lot of different things. And it, it's also kind of the 30th anniversary of the Banff um, classification, which I created. It's the 10 year anniversary of the course. <laughs> Just a lot of stuff to celebrate. So we are having a day long birthday party. Did you ever hear of, of such a thing doing four two hour segments four hours apart starting at 7 30 in the morning and you might be feeling well what are the subjects of the four segments it's good you asked so we have the subject of segment one and two so segment one is human flourishing and the developing world Segment two at 11.30 is poetry, timeless content, and the self-driving car. Now, it may seem to you like those three things have nothing to do with each other, but we will show you how they're all closely connected. And actually, if you've been following the history of Tesla, you know there was a recent fiery crash where two people died and apparently nobody was driving and so on. Anyway. That has led them to conclude that maybe they will never have completely autonomous self-driving Tesla cars. Isn't that interesting? So yeah, anyway, and what about segment three and four? Well, if you go into my Instagram channel, which is very cleverly disguised by my name, Kim Solis. If you just type in K-I-M-S-O-L-E-Z, you get my Instagram channel. And it may seem to you like it must be boring and wrong and stuff because I'm 75 and you know, 75 year olds don't understand Instagram, but you're wrong because 25 year old Mallory Chipman is running my Instagram channel. And I can proudly say, since I don't write a single word that's on there, that she's doing it all, that it's one of the best Instagram channels and it's completely relevant. You'll never see anything there that's like difficult to understand or obtuse or uninteresting. It is positively the most interesting Instagram channel you've ever discovered. And it's mine, but I like if you direct message me there, Mallory will reply to you. So that's who <laughs> it says it's from me, but it's really her. Yeah, so that's that's how it works. So, so it's yeah, but anyway, and so you can vote there on what you think the subject should be for the third and fourth component of the birthday party. I will be in Jasper at a hotel with my wife and she's going to spend a lot of time <laughs> outside so she doesn't have to witness all the birthday party, but she, like she'll bring me food and stuff in between the segments so I don't die of starvation during my 75th <laughs> birthday, which would be bad outcome, right? So yeah, anyway, so, so yeah. And that's not all, but I... <laughs> If I tell you any more, you'll just say, God, it was so terrible. I had to talk to Dr. Solis and he just went on forever. And I, oh, I didn't know how to tell him, listen, I have other things to do today. You behave. Yeah. So anyway, it just went on and on. It was terrible. Yeah. So I'll stop talking. So 
Yeah, this is so neat though. Honestly, like I just really like the fact that you also did an interview because it makes it like so much more personable. And like, especially because the class size, like that was one of the things I actually noticed. I was like, oh wow, like the class size is small because like that means that you get to know everyone else too. And like, I don't know, you kind of like create connections rather than like being one kid in the back of like- yeah. No, no, that 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 is absolutely true. And what you will find is that meeting the other students is one of the most valuable parts of the course. And it, it just gives you an idea of other approaches to going to university that you just never thought about. You know, yeah. like, like you meet people from the Peter Lougheed Leadership College. I don't know if you already know people in that, but, but I mean, that, that's sort of a different culture, you meet people from, you know, business, nursing, so on, all different sort of walks of life. And I, I think it's a very valuable part of the course. Um, yeah, and, and, and to some extent, you can pick any subject, as, as long as you approach it with the mindset of the course. And that mindset is different from any other sort of course you've ever taken. So you can't just like take a presentation or, or a paper from some other course. It would never fit here. Why is that? Because this course talks mainly about speculative content, things that do not exist yet, right? And all your other courses are really boring because they talk about stuff that actually does yeah. exist, right? Yeah, yeah, so we're, we're talking about like scenarios and we talk about enough future scenarios that I guarantee you some of those scenarios will be the future. And as time goes on, you'll find, wow, I'm list, list one of those scenarios from Dr. Solis's course. We just don't know which one. Like yeah. they all are not gonna be the future. We don't know which ones will be and which ones won't be, but yeah, so that, 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 that is absolutely the case. So in that sense, the course kind of has survival value because when the future comes, you will have already considered these things that are ha happening, whereas all your colleagues who haven't taken the course are like, what's going on? <laughs> we'll just calmly tell them, well, let me explain to you because <laughs> I took a course on this back in fall 2021. So I have some understanding of all these strange things that are happening. Yeah, yeah. So it, it, it kind of gives you a leg up, you know, on, on right, the, the rest of your life. And um, yeah, I, I think it's, it's likely to be a mixed audience, some on Zoom and some face-to-face, -face, there, there seems to be some enthusiasm currently. I don't know if it'll continue to, to have this as a face-to-face -face course, but that would not be required and it works pretty well on Zoom. So I think it'll kind of be mixed. There'll be some people in the room with me. And I sort of also I feel I'm kind of beyond most people in my thinking about how COVID spreads because, like in my office, you'd you'd be amazed at how pure the air is. The air coming into the hospital is probably already pretty pure, and then I've got these, you know, HEPA air filters and so on. When the beginning of COVID, everybody thought it spread by fomites, right? touching stuff like like oh don't touch anything you know and wash your lettuce and maybe wash your lettuce with soap and stuff. <laughs> that isn't it i mean i mean it 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 spreads in the air and and it's not all large droplets some of it's true aerosol so i'm going to take some of these air purifier things to the room where where we're teaching because I happen to think it would be good if people who took my course did not catch COVID, right? I mean, be an advantage. So people who are still stuck in the sort of fomite uh, mindset of, oh, don't, don't touch anything. <laughs> I, I, that's fine, they can continue to think that, but we're gonna protect the air so that they don't get, they, 
they really don't get COVID from sitting in the room. Yeah. So, yeah. so anyway, that's the deal. Do you do you have any other questions? Have Have you already sent me your student number? Because I oh, um, I'm not sure if I did, but I can definitely send it to you. Um, yeah. 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 Yeah, and right. and and okay. uh, it's it's always good if it has seven digits because then it's a real <laughs> student number. <laughs> it's got some other number testimony. of digits. I'll be a little bit suspicious that, um, yeah, you you were actually here under an assumed name, and you know I, I've got to check with various security agencies. <laughs> See if we can figure out who you really were, you know. But if you actually have a seven-digit student number, that, that that makes you completely legitimate. Yeah. So having met me now, it is possible that you realize this whole thing was a big mistake, and you know you can't find the heart to tell me that oh you don't want to take the course anymore. So is that how how this went, or do you actually no. still want to take the course? Honestly, if anything, I'm like more convinced. I'm oh my goodness! Well, there, there, there you go. Okay. Yep. No, that that's. But the thing is, I would want to be, I think, signing up for the winter term because. Yeah. Um... Yeah. Sure. Okay. Sure. So, so that's winter 2022, right? Yeah. 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 Exactly. Yeah. 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 No, that okay. that's that's fine. Um, so that that's a little bit more relaxed. So it it's possible that that student roster isn't open yet. I'm not sure. Yeah. But but yeah, still the, this interview is a necessary thing. You yeah. can't get in without it. So now that you've done it, you don't have to do it again. And, and <laughs> yeah. And and you will when when that uh, student roster opens, we will uh add you to the course so oh thank you so much <laughs> yeah so um if make sure you send me your student number and i'll see you in winter 2022 awesome. and uh yeah so any other questions or or is no this... no other questions <laughs> okay cool all right well that's it then and we'll stay in touch and awesome, we will for sure actually Thanks. meet in winter 2022. Okay. <laughs> Sounds good. Great. Great. Have a good summer. See you. you. Too.